Hey guys, welcome back. So now you know we gotta get into Annihilation Scourge, especially with there being like four or more different story arcs pointing back to this one, like Silver Surfer Black, Thanos Imperative, and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there's even some to Thanos wins, and we'll get into that more along the course of this playlist, but yeah, covering this is very necessary. Plus, a lot of you guys have been asking me to get into it, so here we are. But first, for anyone who's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch the spills every week, and don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. Alright, so from where we jump in initially with Annihilation Scourge Alpha, we pick up with Blastar on the planet Nifig within the negative zone, to where at this point he sees countless farmers slaughtered, which appears to be an act of war. And so now prior to this point, we've never did a lot of talk about Blastar, and I'm not going to go too deep into the history and all that, unless at a later point I feel like the narrative calls for it, and then we'll go into all the deep cuts. But I'd say, if anything, most you need to know at this point is like he's your arch nemesis of Annihilus, and at this point still the king of Belur, although in your old Fantastic for comics he was overthrown by his people and marooned from his own kingdom which is how he came into contact with the Fantastic Four when he discovered Reed Richards entering into the negative zone and followed him out but it wasn't until the Fantastic Four had forced him back in to where he had reclaimed his throne in Belur and after that expanded his territory thereafter which would include planets like Nefig where we see the Annihilation Scourge beginning but the crazy thing that happens with all these people who have been slain on Nefig is that when they come across one of the farmers who seem to be a survivor and they ask him who did this to you ten come from his mouth and he replies God in a very men in black sugar water kind of way. So Blastar is like I seen men in black this is some bug type stuff so it's gotta be Annihilus. And I'm paraphrasing by the way per usual but the thing is when we jump over to Annihilus he's going through the same thing and he of course makes his assumption that it's the Belurian people because who else in the negative zone would have the audacity aside from Blastar and for Annihilus he had taken this the exact same way but it's in his case where we see something where we jump to like day four to where we see the Belurians who are attacking Annihilus that once they take them down they won't stay dead and though Annihilus is being urged by his followers to fall back he refuses to do so or surrender because one when you got numbers like Annihilus it's kind of hard to believe that anyone in the negative zone would be able to match or beat your unending fleet but not so much longer later when Blastar arrives Annihilus allows him to land so he can confront him personally and it doesn't take them long after that to figure out that neither one of them is responsible for this attack and after having this discussion it's here where Blastar shows Annihilus two prisoners which he has taken who are part of this scourge and up to this point the language that they have been speaking it didn't make sense to Blastar who had thought it was some secret language with Annihilus and his followers but then as it turns out with a little persuading they begin to speak so that Annihilus and Blastar can understand and it's here where they tell them that they no longer follow Annihilus but rather a new lord and he is coming and so Blastar pretty much gets fed up with this because this is the only thing that they've been saying that is understandable and it's because of this Blastar he just matches one of them and all of a sudden the other one he just starts getting more talkative <laughs> look at that but it's here where he tells them the new master that they serve he offers eternal life and that he's made them his undying but even bigger than that he tells them that his master is the many angled one which is pretty big and I only want to get into part of it right now and the other part we'll save for a little bit later still within this video and for those of you who have already read this you probably know why but as far as the many angled ones who are also known as the great old ones the dark ones dark gods or elder ones they're more of a species or a pantheon than one particular person like for example one that we've talked about the most is Shuma Gorth back when we talked about Blue Marvel saving all of the Avengers but aside from him you have others like Abaroth and Goss and Trufari but I'm pretty sure Shumagora is like the most common to most people and with Shumagora who has also been known as the void made flesh it's almost like this gives us a better idea at like hitting towards who specifically is behind all of this but we'll get back to that in just a little bit but essentially what this causes with the scourge continuing to take over the negative zone it then forces Blastar and Annihilus to fight side by side which is something I figure that most people thought they would never see much like Drake and Meek Mill doing a song together but essentially what this forces Annihilus to do is sacrifice an entire solar system along with half of his ships by blowing up a sun before they're completely overtaken which is an insane number of casualties and a huge depletion of his army with half 
half of them being left behind within the blast radius. And this possibly could have been avoided had Annalis knew like the real depth of this threat. But prior to this point with him not necessarily knowing, refusing to surrender, and really just using the means which he was used to because of the overwhelming size of his bug army. But at the point where he found out here that that wasn't enough, it was just too late. And now he's down to half just because of it. And so now five days later with the scourge continuing and these attacks coming back, we see Blastar handling what he can and telling his men that this threat without a doubt is coming from the Cancerverse, which is something that we've seen back in Thanos Imperative, but also it's something we talked about more recently when we got into Thanos wins, which for some reason at the time it had me pulling so many references from Thanos Imperative, but in a nutshell, your Cancerverse, it essentially is an Earth that was once like your 616 until they encountered the many angled ones, which at the time when we were told this, it was plural, so it was two or more that came here and did this, but after their encounter with the many angled ones, it became a universe where nothing died and everyone from that universe stayed in this perpetual undead state. And at this point in time in day 14, Annihilus and Blastar are well aware of this. So when the Scourge resurfaces, they then have a better idea of what they're dealing with, which is kind of helpful on one hand, but it isn't necessarily good news because not long after this on day 14, they're also met with the arrival of the Revengers, who are your Avengers from the Cancerverse who are augmented by the many angled ones. And much like everything left in that universe, rather than dying, they just stay undead forever. And so when they get here, Blastar bails and he goes to Annihilus and he tells him like, you have to get out of here now. Because while Blastar was holding the off, Annihilus was working on a way to get to the positive zone, which he hasn't been able to test yet, but if Annihilus does not go now, then the Revengers can get their hands on this door, and from there continue their invasion beyond the negative zone. And it's from here, Annihilus leaves Blastar behind, forces his way through, and even doing so, running through refugee ships who rallied here for protection, like it's complete utter chaos. And it's mainly because Annihilus knows here and Blastar's even told him like Blastar told Annihilus I don't have the resources or allies that you have. And I don't even know if you'd so much call them allies, especially with Annihilus going to the person who killed him and that person of course being Richard Ryder. But Annihilus remembers all that going down much differently. But with him entering here in the positive zone to where you have potential resources like Beta Ray Bill, the Silver Surfer who's now Silver Surfer Black and also Reed Richards in the Fantastic Four. This then at least increases the chances of the negative zone being spared if he's able to solicit their help. But initially starting with Richard Ryder, to whom Annihilus is on a collision course with, with the ship incoming quickly and not appearing to be stopping, this then causes Richard Ryder to jump out and literally become the emergency brake so it doesn't kill everybody on his ship. But with Richard Ryder able to do this in just the nick of time, when he goes aboard Annihilus' ship, which for one, I would assume that it surprised him that Annihilus was on the ship, but when he finds out that Annihilus is here coming for help and specifically requesting that help from the Nova Corps, which for quite some time has been destroyed to where at the destruction Richard Ryder was like the sole survivor. And this leads Annalis to believe that if this is actually true then there is no hope left. Which takes us back to Blastar which to me is like this slow motion montage of him fighting this hopeless fight back in the negative zone. You know like right before the person dies and it's real dramatic. But when we see this happening he's met with the arrival of the sentry who has been leading this scourge in the negative zone, which initially is like, wait, what? <laughs> like, this is a steep turn from the last time we talked about this guy. But as we continue to move forward, it gradually starts to make sense. But as we go back to Richard Ryder, who in his mind is running through Annihilation, Annihilation Conquest, Thanos Imperative, and all the way up to this point, and really just trying to connect the dots to what this means with Annihilus being here, but also in addition to that, what happened to the rest of his crew, which appeared to be dead, but not long after it came back to life, attacked Richard Ryder and immediately with doing so this let him know that what they were affected with had came from the Cancerverse. And at this point Richard Ryder who had thought all of that was done with He's not sure if he's hallucinating, like he doesn't know what to think at this point. And because of that, he's like, you know what, I'm about to end this real quick. I'm just going to take this whole ship and just throw it into the sun. And that way, hallucination or not, there's no more Nihilus, there's no more Cancerverse infected, problem solved, now back to business as usual. But then Annalis peeps over his shoulder like, good job. Annalis surely thought you was going to die. But after seeing Richard's reaction, Annalis was like, surely you didn't think I was on that ship. And initially, Richard Rado was going to lie, but he was like, why would I lie? Like, yes, I thought you was on that ship. <laughs> but what ends up happening is like, this stirs the conversation of why would Richard Ryder help Annalis? 
especially with his previous attempts to invade this universe, and especially with Nihilus previously having destroyed the Nova Corps. Like Richard's first thought is to just let Nihilus deal with his own problems, and if he's destroyed in the process, then oh well. But Nihilus lets him know, like, make no mistake, like after they're done with the negative zone, they're coming here. And it's at this point where Richard Ryder takes Nihilus to see the Fantastic Four, to which, mind you, he hasn't been to Earth in a while, and so it took him a little while to find out where exactly their home was. So then after knocking on a few of the wrong doors, and then eventually finding the right door, which was answered by Franklin and Valeria, who soon after just slammed the door in his face. And Annalis, who's like in his trench coat, like nobody's gonna know who he is. But he more or less tells Richard Ryder, like, you just gonna let them disrespect you like that? But essentially it's here where they barge in to find that Franklin and Valeria are the only two here. But once Richard and Annalis make their way inside, Richard begins to make some progress, but then Annalis thinks that he can do it better, and essentially Franklin and Valeria had to take him down. And when they do this, it's here that they tell Richard Ryder that the Fantastic Four has already made their way into the negative zone, which is something that we'll go more into depth with in another video. But for now, I did want to talk a bit about how this pertains to the Sentry, why he went to the negative zone, and how that connects to Reed Richards. Because not long before Annalis and Richard Ryder arrived here, Reed Richards had received a distress signal from the negative zone from a number of refugees who were looking to make their way out. And in order for Reed to get a better idea of what they were running from, he used a memoriam device to project the memories of the refugees so that Reed and the others could see exactly what they were up against. Which of course was much of the evacuation that we had just talked about with the arrival of the Revengers who had torn apart pretty much all of Blastar's defenses just before he had urged Annalis to get out of there. And even even many of those refugees, like we had talked about before, they were getting run over by Annalis trying to make his way through as well. But one of the biggest parts which spooks Reed Richards is when he sees the sentry leading this scourge and immediately to himself he's like this is all my fault. And initially he tries to go by himself to take care of it, but Johnny's like nope I'm going with you too. With at one point him leading an army over there, it's only obvious that he could help. And of course Sue insists that she goes along as well, and Ben is just like at that point well I guess I gotta go. But it's at this point while leaving where Reed tells Franklin and Valeria to pretty much lock this place down because he's called for help from the Avengers, from Spider-Man, Luke Cage, and within a matter of time someone will be here to help out. But even when they leave and pass through for a while, Reed doesn't tell them like what it is as far as what's bothering him, but Sue eventually pulls it out of him. And what we come to find out is that recently, the Void had began to take over Robert Reynolds again. And when this led him into a battle with the agents of Wakanda, not long after he sought out Reed Richards in hopes that he could separate him from the Void permanently, which of course Reed Richards attempted to do, but with doing extensive studies and realizing that the science that is available here wouldn't help, Reed then discovered that the only solution to doing this successfully, it would have to be done in the negative zone, which is the only place where the laws and physics are capable of making this happen, at least according to everything Reed could find. So with Reed sending the sentry there to the negative zone in order to find the solution, and sending him alone with the amount of time that it would have taken, likely being so extensive, and even with time in the negative zone passing differently, because I believe days over there are like hours over here. But with doing this, Reed was led to believe that it was his fault, even if Robert Reynolds found a solution here to separate himself from the void and then had that part missing filled in with something from the cancerverse, then Reed felt responsible mainly because he sent Robert here in the first place. But that's mainly where my initial thoughts come from because with the Sentry and really more so as far as the Void is concerned, because when Robert Reynolds came to the negative zone, he did separate from the Void, but he was also separated from the Sentry as well. And because of this, regular old Robert is out there in the negative zone, free from the Void, and the Sentry, which in a way I feel like it confirms the Void to have been one of the many angled ones because that's really what everything's pretty much pointing towards. But we'll revisit this pretty soon and when it's done I want to know what you guys think. But for now, quick shout out to all the Patreons, thanks again to all you guys for holding it down and I can't stress enough that all contributions are greatly appreciated all across the board because it's you guys who really keep the gears moving. And for anyone who wants to join in, I got links in the description so you can get early access to new merch in 2020 and automatically signed up for the upcoming giveaways, to which you can find more information at patreon.com slash dopespill. But just to let you guys know, there's plenty more we'll get into with Annihilation Scourge, but just before we do, make sure that you're caught up with Silver Surfer Black. Whew, just saying. And I'll leave that link below as well. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and I'll catch you on the next one. Alright, later. <laughs>